next to Dr. Chris Lonnins, who's the um, clinical lead speech and language therapist for children with complex communication disorders. You guys, I've got on my list. That was gone forever. No. Um, she's worked at Guy's Hospital for a long time in the assessment of children with complex needs. Um, but also, particularly, the assessment of children with learning difficulties, communication disorders, and autism spectrum disorders. She's also got an honorary position at King's College London, and she's going to talk about the differentiation of ASD and SLI and whether it matters. <laughs> yes, well, I must start by saying that I felt when I got this decision that I, I had a huge topic in 10 minutes, <laughs> and on Saturday I had 36 slides, um, and I've done a lot of pruning and it's down to 16, <coughs> but since this is a huge topic, I'm going to talk fast, and what I, I want you to do is, it'll just bathe you, I, 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 there's going to be quite a lot of information, and I think, you know, in terms of the debate or discussion we might have, we could pick up those bits, but, but I, I'm, I am going to whiz along, because um, I want to get to some questions at the end. So, um... Differential diagnosis between ASD and SLI, that's something that we spend quite a lot of time trying to do in uh, our work at GUYS. And um, I think it's just worth noting that actually they're both behaviourally de uh, defined disorders. In other words, there are no blood tests or anything else that we can do to help us. We're looking at behaviour. They are different in that one is, by definition, a pervasive disorder, and the other is, by definition, a specific disorder. Uh, but both involve clinical decision-making. Uh, in ASD, actually, we ha we're slightly better off because we now have um, some prescription in terms of what a, a good diagnosis would be and how to do it and what measures one might use. Um, and that's now um, enshrined in a nice guideline. Um, but in SLI, um, we haven't had the same process. So, um, that, but, but nonetheless, people do tend to use standard assessments of language and IQ and compare them. Although I don't know how many times people, IQ is actually part of that diagnostic, diagnostic process in, in practice as usual in clinics. Both systems use observation and informal assessment. And in SMI, there's a necessary exclusion of everything else. And in autism, uh, um, it's not the case because autism trumps everything. So people have been unhappy with the diagnosis, particularly of, of um, SLI, and have looked for clinical markers rather than exclusion and measurement. Um, and they've looked in the areas of um, syntax um, and normal repetition, but also pragmatics, gesture and inference. And there's lots of research which then has seen if those markers, clinical markers, are useful in differentiating ASD. <coughs> Obviously, for the purposes of these studies, uh, people are looking at ASD with a language impairment, bearing in mind that there's a lot of people with an ASD diagnosis who have very good language. So they're concentrating on people where there is a language impairment. And the research seems to suggest, and this is my very quick run through what is a huge body of research. So actually what does seem to be the case and differentiates is regression. That seems to be autism specific, mainly. Um, at preschool years, um, there are difficulties at all levels of language when we assess them. Um, but a recent paper from our PACT study, looking at a large cohort, 156 children with core autism, we seem to find that the normal balance of better receptive and expressive skills, the 5 to 1 type ratio, occurs generally, does not, may not occur in autism. And at school age, um, children with autism had, had, tend to have difficulties with higher order language skills, significant problems of comprehension, problems of discourse and functional communication. And if we look at um, uh, language impairment, and I've actually not always put the S there, but uh, because that's one of the problems. Um, again, difficulties with all levels of language, um, people have really, I mean, we're assuming that that discrepancy in terms of receptive and expressive is not occurring there. Um, or rather is occurring there, and at school age you tend to find these children defined as having more structural language difficulties, generally better comprehension and expression, although they both both be, both be impaired, and then you can have problems with synology, and, and um, the paper with Williams, Botting and Boucher I think is a really good pulling together of all the literature about differential diagnosis, causation, levels of functioning, and I can give references later.